Good. I can't wait till we can for the bank to do all these big wonderful events that are going to take place there. They give the Torianda their dance, you know. And there's going to be the performers of all kinds. And there's going to be a real celebration. And music was in the Terry's playing with, yeah. with his accordion and, and Brian mm -hmm. Paul is playing, playing during, this, during the banquet and performing. It's going to be, it's going to be a, an awesome ex experience. <laughs> experience is going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a lifetime memory.
anyone thirsts, let him come to me, let him drink, let him drink who believes in me. Scripture has it, from within him rivers of living water shall flow. Here he was referring to the Spirit, whom those that came to believe in were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit as yet, since Jesus had not been glorified. Some in the crowd heard these words began to say, This must be the prophet. Others proclaim, He is the Messiah. But an objection was raised. Surely the Messiah is not to come from Galilee. Does not Scripture say that the Messiah, being of David's family, is to come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? In this fashion, the crowd was sharply divided for him. Some of them even wanted to apprehend him. However, no one laid hands on him. When the temple guards came back, the chief priests and the Pharisees asked him, Why did you not bring him in? The man ever spoke like that before. The guards replied, Do not tell us you have been taken in, the Pharisees retorted. You do not see any of the Sahedrin believing in me or the Pharisees, only this lot that knows nothing about the law, and they are lost in it. One of their own number, Nicodemus, the man who had come to him, spoke up to say, Since when does our law condemn any man without first hearing him and knowing the facts? Do, do not tell us you are a Galilean too, they taunted him. Look at us. You will not find the prophet coming from Galilee. Jesus spoke to him once again. I am the light of the world. No believer of mine shall ever walk in darkness. No, he shall possess the, the light of life. Was also studying at St. Paul's University. 
It was here that Walter made a life-changing decision that he would not become a monk, but rather become a diocesan priest. Upon arriving back in Winnipeg, he was assigned for a short stay to the Cathedral of Saints Vladimir and Olga in Winnipeg with Father Kushmir. Still in 1961, intending to move to Eastern Canada, his plans were changed when on the advice of Monsignor Peter Leskew of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Walter joined the newly formed St. Nicholas Diocese in Chicago, Illinois. In 1962, he continued his studies and attended the Catholic University in Washington, D.C., where he studied four years of theology while working summers with neglected children in the Bronx to help pay his university tuition. In 1966, on March 25th, on the Feast of the Annunciation, Walter was ordained to the Holy Priesthood by Bishop Yaroslav Gablo. Father Walter was assigned to St. Nicholas Cathedral in Chicago, Illinois. In, in 1969, Father Walter returned to Winnipeg because of illness in the family. In 1970, Father returned to the United States and was assigned to St. Mary's Parish in St. Louis, Missouri. Here, Father faced his first challenge. The parish had just transferred from the Ruthenian Rite to the Ukrainian Rite. They spoke Ukrainian, but they called themselves Ruthenian. And they intensely disliked being called Ukrainian. Father, being a diplomat, an understanding and compassionate and kind, and, and kind person, remedied, remedied the situation by calling them Nashi Lude, or our people, and the problem was speedily solved. In 1971, Father was on the move again. He was assigned to St. John the Baptist Parish on Clifford Avenue in West Detroit with Monsignor Bokhnevich. Father served 11 years as assistant priest and one year as a parish priest. Here, Father had the privilege of working with a second Italian woman who influenced his priestly journey. And, and that was Sister Dorothea Macalco, SSMI, who was the principal of St. John the Baptist School. Father taught religion and counseled at the school. Together as a team, Father and Sister Dorothea created a very strong sense of community, and both the parish and the school grew substantially, with standing room only at the five Sunday liturgies. On the move again, in 1982, Bishop Innocent Notowski, OSBM, to have peace of mind Realizing Father Walter's leadership qualities and attitudes so compassionate and kind, he assigned Father to St. Nicholas Cathedral again in Chicago. Here as pastor and because of his people skills, Father Walter was elevated to Vicar General of the St. Nicholas Diocese. As a pastor of the cathedral, Father was faced with another dilemma. He had to settle a split in the congregation because half, of, because half wanted the new calendar and half wanted the old calendar. So out of the 1,200 families, 600 left and built another $7 million church two blocks away from the cathedral. Father worked patiently to, re to, to rebuild the cathedral community. He realized the importance of educating for the future of the parish, so he stressed the importance of the cathedral school. Here, Father had the privilege of working with the third valiant woman who influenced his priestly journey, and that was Sister Kozatka Bury, OSBM, a Brazilian sister, who was the principal of St. Nicholas School. Together, working as a team, the school reached an all-time high enrollment of a thousand students. Also in 1982, Father Walter, the 
dedicated and friendly parish priest finally received Hollywood recognition. Though Father never thought it to be his ambition, he played a part and rose to movie star fame. He played the part of a priest and appeared in the movie, not my wife, but my life, <laughs> starring Nicole Kidman and Michael Keaton. The movie was filmed in St. Nicholas Cathedral. In 1986, her father's service as pastor and vicar general and much dedication, Bishop Innocent Kutotsky elevated Father Walter to Canada. In 19, oh, 1994, after 12 years of service at St. Nicholas, Nicholas Cathedral, Father Walter took a year sabbatical to rejuvenate and to broaden his spirituality at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. In 1995, Father Walter moved back to Winnipeg due to his aging mother and illness in the family. In November of 1995, Father's friend, Bishop Stefan Soroka, assigned Father to St. Anne Parish in North Cordova. In, in his 11th year, under the spiritual leadership and guidance of Father Walter, the parish grew from 320 registered families to 444. The liturgical life of St. Anne Parish flourished. Each of the three divine liturgies, liturgies were unique in its, its character and met the needs of the expanding parish community. And the choirs have expanded to five. The catechetical program was very successful. The Eucharistic ministers expanded. The altar servers were numerous. And St. Anne's was one of the few parishes that was still attracting young people to the church and to the catechetical program. The parish organizations were very active, contributing to the life of the parish. Father Walter, with his counseling degree, kind heart, and sense of humor, counseled and helped countless individuals and couples, performed 264 baptisms, 86 weddings, and 65 funerals, anointed and prayed for the sick, prayed over countless individuals at healing services, and prayed for the personal requests of numerous individuals, all the time leading in daily prayer of the Rosary to Mary and celebrating a divine liturgy every day of the week to those seeking to enrich their life with the living Christ in the Eucharist. On March 25, 2006, Father Walter celebrated 40 years of the Holy Priesthood at St. Anne's with a banquet held in his honor. In 2010, after 15 years at St. Anne's, Father was transferred to St. Basil's Parish in St. James, where he continues to pray the rosary daily and on Sundays with his congregation, crying following the divine liturgy. Though Father Walter has problems with mobility, he continues with his parish duties. Parish duties, right. In 2014, Father made a monumental change when he united his congregation into one, having only one liturgy on Sunday. Father's sermons are current, non judgmental positive, in touch with reality, very inspirational and uplifting. The church bulletins are also very informative and deal with current issues that are confronting people in the world these days and how we should be recept receptive people in the face of constant change. In conclusion, Father Walter, on the occasion of your 50th anniversary of the priesthood, we wish you faith, health, and prosperity on your continued journey as a priest. Slava and peace be to you.
us with great joy. And I wish every candidate, if he ever goes for the priest, would find the same happiness that I have today after 50 years being a priest. Maybe, maybe there were difficulties, but the whole plan of how God guides you, if you have faith in him, and if you believe in, in his, uh, his uh, power, and you have that relationship with the mother of God, you can become very blessed as a priest. And I would have been extremely blessed. And before I, I want to say there's a miracle here in this parish today that I will never, ne I can't believe it. My first long birth and first wedding that I had are here with people at me. <laughs>
That's a surprise to me. Congratulations, Father. 
Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Take care. You too.
rather than hurt. We must learn to be constructive rather than destructive. We must not criticize others before we examine the self within us. Our vision is to see the goodness in others and to welcome all others. Metropolitan Lawrence, Reverend Clergy, Sisters, Servants of Immaculate, parishioners, family, and friends. My name is Daryl Prosiak, and it is a pleasure to have to be with you here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the ordination to the priesthood of the man who both wrote and lived by these words, the Right Reverend Canon Walter Klimchuk. <laughs> Father Walter was ordained March 25th, 1966 at St. Nicholas Cathedral in Chicago by Bishop Gabro. And since that time, he has profoundly affected the lives of so many people with his positive energy, deep spirituality, and wonderful sense of humor. I think I can speak for all of us here, all of us gathered here, from the many different parishes you serve, Father, when I say we thank God for having you in our lives. Now, I, I did ask Father for, for ideas and what to say at his 50th anniversary, and he gave me three pieces of advice. First, always speak with your heart. Father, you taught us to speak your language. And believe me, life's too short not to say what you feel. Second, Father really wanted you all to have a wonderful time. And he, and he said, I, I should ask each and every one of you, how are you doing? <laughs> so how are you doing? Tell, Walter, tell Father Walter. Big round of applause for him. Finally, Father said I should not be so serious. Instead, I needed to be joyful and perhaps to have some fun. In fact, he told me that I could tell you of his first experience hearing confession when he was at the cathedral in Chicago. Now, being, early, being uh, newly ordained, Father said he was very nervous about hearing confession, and so he asked Monsignor Leskew to stay with him during the confessions. Now, after several parishioners finished with their confessions, Monsignor Leskew offered Father a little advice. He said, just cross your arms over your chest, rub your chin, and try say, say, saying things like, I see, yes, go on, I understand, and how do you feel about that? Father Walter tried out the gestures and the words. Monsignor Leskew said, good. Now, don't you think that sounds a lot better than slapping your knee and saying, no kidding, what happened next? <laughs> opportunity to thank Terry Krynek for his music as we arrived. He has definitely set the tone for the, for the wonderful evening to come. And for those who wish to extend their greetings to Father, there will be an opportunity to do so at the microphone a little later in the program. For information, bottles of wine are available for purchase at the cash bar located outside and to the right. And the washroom is also located outside the main doors to the right. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Veronica Hotel, who will present Bread and Salt, a traditional greeting that symbolizes both life and friendship.
Reverend Lawrence Huslak, the Metropolitan of the Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy of Winnipeg, for the blessing of food. I know that we'll be seated for a long time this evening, so I invite you to rise to help your circulation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your blessing upon us this evening as we gather here to give recognition to Father Walter and to reflect on the importance of the priesthood for all of us. We ask at the same time that you would bless this food and the drink of that which we are about to partake, but we, it's important that we are always mindful of those in our society, in our neighborhoods, and all around us who do not have enough food or drink to eat. At the same time, we recall the words that your son Jesus has taught us, and together we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Christ our God, bless the food and drink of your servants, for you are holy now always, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From your Tiai in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Such noble. At this stage in my life, I can't do two things at once, even though I was a school teacher. So I'm going to read the poem, and she's going to click the uh, pictures for me. Most Reverend Lawrence Kutuyak, Reverend, Right Reverend Canon Walter Krimchuk, Reverend Fathers and Dobrodikia, Reverend Deacons, Reverend Sisters, Klimchek and Re Repeson families, ladies and gentlemen, and youth. A sincere thank you to Marge Cardi, John Klimchek, Father Walter, Emil Ticklick, Tony Sklar, and Jane McCarville for the pictures that made this presentation possible. A special thanks, thank you to Doug Husalak and Josef Mudri for transferring all the pictures into a PowerPoint format. You all know the saying that behind every successful man, there is a woman. Well, in Father Walter's case, was that in his vocation as a priest, his spiritual journey was highly in influenced by three valiant women, believe it or not. And you will see who these women are when we present the PowerPoint presentation. All right. A tribute to Father Walter on his 50th anniversary of the priesthood. A cheer, a cheer to Father Walter, and certainly a toast. A compassionate and spiritual friend of whom one can boast. His talents of ministering, praying, counseling, and such, who to everyone he meets means so very much. In 1938, from beginnings very poor and humble. In a simple farmhouse in Tyndall came Walter without a grumble. Born to Nicholas and Christine into a family with joy, his presence was warmly welcomed by John, the other boy. Shortly after his arrival, his family continued to expand. The, the arrival of Christine, a sister, to help them on the land. A little later, another sister, Margie, was born with charm, additional helping hands to aid on the meager farm. Walter's life on the farm was always full of toil, but to happy parents, therefore children not to spoil. The chores of picking, hoeing, milking, and weeding kept him busy and occupied from morning till evening. As Walter grew and attended Tyndall School, he greatly valued his education and practiced the golden rule. Every day with lunch and books, off he would trot to the 12 room school where the strict teachers taught. Then in 1954, at age 15, during summer catechism class, 
Walter's future would change drastically was the true alas. Sister Anastasia Prema asked a pertinent question of the boys. Is there anyone who wants to be a priest and leave all the joys? And Sister Antonasia is the one on your right. And all three are members of the Prema family. You have Sister An An Anastasia on the right, Sister um, Nathaniel. Nathaniel on the left, and their brother, Father Martin Prema in the middle. Walter, being brave, volunteered single-handed. Single Before he knew it, on the train and in, in Mandera, Alberta, he landed. At the Basilian Father's Monastery to become a monk, with 50 other boys who were all full of spunk. These years of studying were once to remember, as he anxiously anticipated to start each September. The daily routine of prayer, chapel, and school. Boy, was he a fan, and out of Walter the boy, it made Walter the man. Walter's fondest memories of the monastery was the meager supper, only enough portions to make him really suffer. When it came for time for bed, his stomach would growl, enough to make him sit up in bed and howl. Off to the fields to get something nutritious to eat, cautiously and stealthily to enjoy a raw beef, and for recreation so he could enjoy a puff, smoking his cigarette through the round window hole. That was enough. <laughs> but those memorable days at the monastery came to pass. Walter graduated with Alberta Correspondence School for his grade 12 class. As a scholastic of the Basilian Fathers, off to Ottawa he went, off to St. Paul's University, is where his time he would spend. In 1961, he completed his study in philosophy with a big grin, with Alec Trebek, a best friend whom he did win. Realizing that becoming a monk wasn't exactly his call, he decided to become a diocesan priest, so people he could enthrall. Upon arrival back in Winnipeg, Father was assigned very quick. To the cathedral with Father Kushner, he didn't get a chance to pick. Being ambitious and realizing he wanted more challenging to say the least, he abruptly ended his short stay and quickly headed for the east. On his way there, he was convinced rather suddenly to go to America, the land of opportunity and plenty. In Minneapolis, Monsignor Peter Lescu, he was no fool. Realizing Walter's talent and his personality so very cool, convinced him to join the new St. Nicholas Diocese and play it by the rule. In 1962, after joining at this diocese he thought so cool, Walter was once more off to theological school. After four years of uni university studies at the Catholic U in Washington, D.C., and working summers with neglect neglect neglected children in the Bronx to pay his university fee, he finally finished his theological degree. In 1966, in Chicago, on the Feast of the Annunciation, Bishop Gabro officiated at Walter's ordination. His first assignment at St. Nicholas Cathedral in Chicago was gigantic, the thought of which made him really quite frantic. But in 1969, due to illness in the family, Father Walter did return. To his family in Canada, his presence they did yearn. His time helping his family was of short duration to return to the USA, his adopted nation. In 1970, assigned to St. Mary's in St. Louis, Missouri for a short bout, as parish priest and his own boss, he made accomplishments, no doubt. In 1971, a move to the big time in Detroit finally came. He was transferred to St. John the Baptist to finally win some acclaim. 
At this parish in the Otto City in the West End, his boss, Monsignor Boknevich, with whom he had to contend. For 11 years as assistant and one as parish priest, he did preach, completed his graduate studies in guidance and counseling so he could teach. At the parochial school where he worked so diligently hard to enlighten, through religious and counseling to many students, he could brighten. Being a person of good nature, monumental accomplishments he did make. With the help of Sister Dorothea Mahalko, principal at Great Team for Goodness Sake. A strong and vibrant sense of community in the parish they did create to the point where all liturgies have standing room only for parishioners to participate. And Sister Mahalko is the first sister, is the sister at the very front there. Oh, that's at the very front on the left-hand side. She was the principal of the school when father was in Detroit. In 1982, Bishop Petrotsky, realizing his leadership qualities and attitude so kind, reassigned him to the Cathedral of St. Nicholas to have peace of mind. Here as pastor, and because of his people's skills, Father Walter was elevated to Vicar General to enjoy all of his thrills. As pastor of the cathedral, Father had to contend a split in the congregation that he had to mend. A difference in calendars, did it really make sense? to cause a split in the church at what expense. With half of the 1,200 families gone on their own, with fortitude and consideration, Father didn't even moan. He worked patiently to rebuild the cathedral community with tact, where he stressed the importance of a school. That was a fact. Realizing the importance of educating the youth so they would thrive, the future of an educated church so it should survive. With Sister Chrysantha Burry, principal, as part of his team, the school reached an all-time high enrollment of 900 students. Boy, did they glean. This dedicated and friendly priest received Hollywood recognition, though never ever thinking it to be his am ambition. He played a part and rose to movie star fame the part of his priest that won him acclaim. The title of the movie, My Life Was Its Name. In 1986, for service as pastor and vicar general and much dedication, Bishop Lutowski elevated Father Walter to canon amid great elation. In 1994, after 12 faithful years at the Cathedral of St. Nick, Father decided on a year's leave of absence to revive real quick. And this is the Klimchuk and the Rebison family. And that is father's cousin, Sister Nunziata Rebison, who works uh, with retired priests in the, in the city of Indianapolis. His sabbatical at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington was great. He re-energized and broadened his spirituality, how it influenced his faith. Again, his family beckoned him to Canada. His presence made a journey. So Father Walter, due to illness in the family, did to Winnipeg return. In 1995, Bishop Stefan Soroka gave him this advice. Come to serve at St. Anne Church, a parish friendly and really nice. So Father, out of kindness, such a cool offer could not resist. With this caring attitude and openness of mind, he also tries to persist. And this is the First Communion, St. Anne's in the late 90s. And this one is the Catechism Children of St. Anne's in the late 90s. And this is Father Ernie Hapachuk welcoming Father Walter to St. Basil's in 2010. The next slide doesn't want to go. Oh, 
Bulgaria here. Okay, this is the 50th anniversary of St. Basil's Parish in 2011. the UCWLC celebrating their 50th anniversary 2011. This is the Bishop's Synod with Patriarchs throughout the 12, 2012. And this is my favorite picture. <laughs> and this is the real reason why Father came back to Winnipeg. He likes the Ukrainian Kubasan. No, that's actually him at the Knights of Columbus uh, barbecue in 2012. And Father, I hope you're going to share that you shared that Kubasa with the Knights of Columbus. Okay. <laughs> this is the first Holy Communion in 2015. Okay. This is Sister Ruth Amy, who did the uh, special presentation about Blessed Josefata Gorbachevska, foundress of the SSMI. This is the Christmas pageant of the Women's Catholic Women's League, the youth and the uh, children, the catechism children, in 2015. This is farewell to Sister Ruth as she leaves for Australia from January to the end of May, 2015. Father Walter and myself, after a divine liturgy in 2016, Father Walter, and I'd like to read this. What can we all say to this faithful and caring friend, except to add that a true, true friendship will never end, that fond wishes and good feelings last forever, that ties between two true, true friends will never sever. A wish for the future is a wish for good things, I wish that there be the joy that life brings. I wish that tomorrow will be brighter than today. I wish that everything will always go its way. Congratulations, Father, on 50 years of the priesthood. And the three women I was talking about were all nuns. Sister Anastasia influenced him, Sister um, uh, Michalko, Dorothea, and Sister, uh, the principal of the school of St. Basil, Sister... Uh, Father, Mr. Grisant Tabudi, thank you very much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Brian Hall and Nina Semenko. So I'll play a selection of songs for us to enjoy. Good evening. I just want to mention that Father Walter was a friend and mentor almost 15 years. And along with Lordy, we did a lot of uh, services, a lot of weddings and funerals. And I'll never forget that time. So he told me to spread some love around tonight, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some love songs and raise the roof here. All right. How sweet it is to be loved by you.
oversized men's floor here. Help yourself. There's no, there's no rules, right? right? Is there rules for that father about that? I didn't think so. Talking to a quiet little place and have a drink. 
occur very often in even today's marriages. But of course, we know that they weren't married. But at times, these two wonderful priests getting to know each other were forced to compromise and set aside some of their differences and frustrations, frustrations, which was not very easy for them to do. And on top of it all, guess what? They had to work right next to each other, and their offices were actually situated right next to each other, so when they didn't want to talk to each other, what did they do? How did they communicate? Well, they closed the door on each other. They wouldn't look at each other, they closed the door on each other, and guess what they did? They started sending letters from underneath the door. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. And that's how they communicated. But you know, those days, communication wasn't like today. You could text somebody if you don't even like them. Right? But eventually, these two priests, they grew to know each other very, very well. And they worked as an amazing, amazing team, which they brought so many people to that church that believe me, there was not enough space in that, in that church to fit everyone. So I want us, my friends, for you just to picture, picture this. Look around yourself here today. Look. How many people you think there are here today? Huh? How many people? 500? 500. Okay. Now consider this. This picture. When Father Walter and Father Michael Bokanavich were running that church at St. John's, there were over a thousand people coming to church on Sundays, regular Sundays, with five divine liturgies. Five. Five. Isn't that true? That's true. There was five. Five masses going on every Sunday. People were standing outside the church stairs, even with umbrellas, when it was raining. People didn't want to go home after church. They stayed outside. They socialized until the evening. That was the kind of church we grew up in. People socialized. They talked to each other. They worked with each other. And Father Walter, let me tell you something about Father Walter. He was so liked, and he was so famous, that some said that he was even more famous than the mayor of Detroit. <laughs> you know, he appeared, as you saw in Hollywood movies, with famous actors like, like Nicole Kidman and Michael Keeney, Keen, Keener, whatever his name was. <laughs> I see, I don't really care what he is. I just go Father Walton was better. And some say he was so handsome that all the single women in the parish wanted to marry him. And even some of the married women. <laughs> Once he told me that he wanted to get away on a quiet vacation. Far, far away from everyone. So what did he do? He books a quiet vacation and he goes to this beachside beautiful resort by himself, laying on the beach, absorbing the nice warm sun and listening to the gentle sounds of the waves. Then all of a sudden, a woman from nowhere shows up right next to him and she says, taps him on his shoulder, well, hello, Father Walter. Slava, you so he couldn't believe it. He says, Slava Namika. <laughs> he gets up, he takes his beach towel, and he runs back to his room to hide. <laughs> and you think, some of you think that Elvis had it back? <laughs> Father Walter, he presided at so many funerals down the street from the church at this famous Haradoski funeral home. And after a while getting to know, getting to know Father Walter, the, the director of the funeral home says, you know what, Father Walter, why don't you get your youth group started here on top of the funeral home at my residence. They had a big place up there, beautiful yard. And so that's what he did. He joined, he asked all these young people to get together 
at Hardoski's funeral home. <laughs> and we did. We got together, but it was fun. Father Walter, we had fun, eh? We used to do things like go bowling down the street to Green Lanes. We used to go uh, to Tiger Stadium. We'd go uh, bowling, uh, playing all kinds of sports. And my greatest my memory of Father Walter was when we went to Bogotá. You know, we went to Bogotá. It was called Garbage Hill. It was a huge hill at Heinz Drive, and we'd go there. And all these young people, this youth group was there, and we had this long toboggan, and, and it's really high, and it's icy, really icy. And he gets on top of it, in the back of the toboggan, and with three other people in front of him, and zip, they take off right down the hill. They're going, and they're going, like, really going. And then all of a sudden, by the end of it, in the middle somewhere there, somebody moves over and tilts over, and boom, there they go, rocking and rolling all the way down, down to the bottom of the hill. And you should have seen his face full of the beautiful snow. <laughs> so today I'd also like to share with you today one particular beautiful summer day when I pulled up to Father Walter's residence, his house. I pulled up to his residence on my 750cc motorcycle. I was 18 years old, wearing my knee-high boots, my black leather jacket, and I walked up the stairs with my black helmet and shield in my hands, and I ring the doorbell, and, I, and Father Walter sees me, opens the door, and he says, come on in. So he, he invites me in, and so you can sit down. He says, okay, how can I help you, Taras? What, what's, what's on your mind? And I say, well, I say, Father Walter, I was thinking, I was thinking about becoming a priest. And he says to me, Really? <laughs> he said, Taras, really? I said, really? We hope that we can get together as, as we are tonight, you know? I want to thank you uh, for being there for me and for my family from the beginning of my journey until this very day. Somehow God brought that little boy I was talking to you about in the beginning of this speech. That little boy came back to your church. And that little boy is me. For you keep me showing me the way to heaven. You know? Thanks a lot. Thank you for your support, for your love, your guidance, and God bless you. to Father Walter on behalf of my mother, brother, and myself on this very special occasion, marking 50 years since his ordination to the priesthood. Not that many people can claim, can claim a commitment of that many years, and for that alone, you should be congratulated. To explain my relationship with him, my mother, Marjorie Cardi, is his sister. While to many of you, he has been a priest, confidant, and friend, to me and my brother, Jeff, he has always been our Uncle Wally. He had a calling to become a priest at a very young age. My mother remembers that as a young boy, Father Walter would drape a cape on his back, pretending to be a priest. Nowadays, he would be mistaken for imitating Superman or Batman. But make no mistake, he was determined. From humble beginnings, raised on a farm in Garson, Manitoba, he would roll up his pant legs and truck down those muddy roads and make sure that he attended Sunday Mass. 
Eventually, he moved on from those muddy roads, and he left the home. He left his home at a tender age of 16 to attend the Brazilian Fathers Monastery in Monmere, Saskatchewan. And so the journey began for Uncle Wally into priesthood. Father Walter has always had an appreciation of music, but what some of you may not know is that back in the day, he took accordion lessons. Yes, that's right, accordion lessons. And he could actually play quite well. I fondly remember many family gatherings in Tyndall, Manitoba, where he would belt out whispering hope on the old accordion. Throughout his priesthood, Father Walter continued to expand his knowledge. As Deacon Gordon previously mentioned, a degree in philosophy, master's in counseling, and completion of his the theological studies. He then also took a sabbatical to study at Gonzaga in Spokane, Washington. In addition, he regularly attended workshops on spirituality and healing, which he continues to do. And through these, he has traveled far and wide to attend these conferences. We because God always guides us. And when I made my decision to leave the, uh, the religious life, the life of a monk, I knew that I had a vocation to the priesthood. And when I arrived at St. Joseph's Seminary in Washington, D.C., as I came down the aisle and I knelt before the iconostas, and to this day, as I knelt there, I heard this voice, Son, you are home. And from that day, I knew that God was going to guide me. Never did I ever uh, doubt that I had a vocation to the priesthood. But I have also like to share why a priest can be happy. It's a journey, and not only is it a journey, but you have to learn how to pray. Prayer without prayer, you cannot grow. Prayer is power, and when you learn the power of prayer, and whatever you ask my name, I shall grant it to you. And whenever I pray, I know I have the power of God. And whenever he said, ask and you shall receive, and knock, and whatever you ask my name, I shall grant it to you. And with this in mind, I knew that prayer was very important. And I don't just pray, you know, the, uh, the regular prayers of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the books, but pray from the heart. Pray with feelings. Another thing that helped me, I became a priest to Mary. Blessed Mary became my mother. And wherever I, there was a shrine in all of the United States, and every Monday when I was the pastor of Cathedral, where it was the most difficult assignment in my life, I went to Holy Hill in Wisconsin with Sister Crisanta, and I prayed to Our Lady of Christian Hope. And she always gave me that hope. And I followed her to every shrine in the United States, to all the shrines. I went to Guatemala. I went to Medjugorje when the kids were very young. I went to Garbadal. I went to every shrine that I could find of the Blessed Mother. And I said, Mary, help me, because I want to be a good priest. One of the things I also learned in my journey as a priest, don't ever complain and, and tell someone uh, blame someone for your unhappiness. I was once feeling very down and I went to, to reflect on it and I had gone to a store across and I bought this book, I Ain't Much Baby, but that's all I got. <laughs> and when I read that book I bawled in every page because the first time in my life I learned I was blaming everybody but except myself. I thought it's time to grow up and start doing something with myself. And from that day on, I have been taking courses all over, wherever there's any spirituality that will teach me to change my consciousness, to become a more positive and loving person, I start going. I start flying to all courses all over America. And even this, just a few months ago, I went to Regina, I went to Edmonton for a spiritual course, because if you don't expand your time, expand today and become modern and come with a new, a new energy that has come on this planet, you are not going, you're not going to grow in spirituality. Spirituality requires, when I went for my sabbatical, that we become people contemporary, that we understand the young people, that it, they think differently, they feel differently, and they are different people, and today is a different society. 
One of the things I learned also, never judge. We are so judgmental. Why can't we just love unconditionally? That is the way God loves us. He loves us and accepts us the way we are. Every moment, he just loves us. Second thing I learned as a priest, you got to love yourself. Every morning I get up, I jump in front of my mirror and say, God, there's no one like me. I, <laughs> you know, and I tell them, these are my finger, fingerprints, God, there's the one that has my fingerprints. This is my hair, no one has my hair. I am unique, I am beautiful, God bless me. Help me to become more loving and giving. I have learned that one of the big, biggest stumbling blocks in Christianity, we have been taught not to love ourselves. Another thing I have learned as a priest, be positive. Always see the bright side of life. I learned this through a lesson when two, when two men were looking out the window in the prison. One saw all the mud and all the different weeds that were rolling through and everything and through the window. And the other one saw nothing but the stars. He said the sun sets, the, the sun rises. He saw the beauty of nature. Both were looking through the same window. And I said from now on, I will always look through the window of positivity and see life in a very positive and like, likable way. And finally, ex I learned that you have to constantly expand yourself. Constantly expand yourself reading new, new books, reading new, new insights to life, and, and being grateful for the knowledge that's given to you. Finally, the last thing, be grateful. We need to be grateful. Every morning when I get up in the morning, I don't have to go outside to go to the bathroom and dig a hole. You know, <laughs> you know I, I, I always think, God, how great we are. We have our bathroom for that. I go to the bathtub and I turn the water and it washes my, my beautiful body. And I say, God, how, how great thou art. How great thou art. And indeed we are. How great we are to be grateful. They say when people are grateful, they don't complain. So if you go home today and someone is complaining, say, be grateful. They look around and see how blessed you are. So today I, I have to thank all of you. This is a celebration of a joyful priesthood. I am so joyful today that I, I feel like I am a, a one of the most um, fortunate people in my life and that's love that all of you 500 of you showing up for this occasion at my 50th anniversary is very touching and so I have a long list of thank yous so you have to be because if you're not grateful you are not appreciative I don't know if I can read all of this but I'm going to try my best I'd like to thank first all Robert Patel for sending for sending Sending the videos and all those things that it was great. Also to thank Joe Ilkew and Pat McDonald for assisting with the luncheons. I want to thank the special people who came from all over the United States, especially Gunter, Deanne, uh, uh, Gunter and Deanne Dort. They were my first converts and my first marriage. Please we just stand up and see how you could you look after 50 years of, of marriage. I also have I also have my friend uh, from there from Chicago. I also have my beautiful friend Jerry Curran. Jerry Curran now lives in Florence, uh, Oregon. I met him as I was learning how to not uh, trying to get some money to pay for my seminary bills when I worked with neglected children in New York City. He came to be to to be with me. We've known each other for 54 years, and he has come here. So I'd like to. Uh, uh, thank you. And they also say you should, you're always as successful as a woman that stands behind you. I was successful in Detroit because I had a super secretary from Manitoba from, from uh, what I think she was from Oakburn. Her, her name was Eleanor Natio. She married a small and she was my secretary for close to 10 years, and she flew in from Texas to be with me today. God bless you. Come on. Come on. And 
when I was really down in my life and when I was having, you know, challenges, I needed a friend, a friend that would always be there that I could talk to, a friend that would understand my spirituality and assist me in my journey. I belonged to the charismatic movement for 30 years where I prayed for sometimes for eight hours to 10 hours over people. And I met on that journey a beautiful, beautiful soul. And he, he, he came later on in to join my, my, uh, my group. But I met him when he came in for, to get married. And when, when Sean came into my life, we, we bonded as brothers. And I had the fortune to be there for, for his wedding. I married him. I flew out to Texas when he became a pilot. And I spent time with him when he became a pilot. And Sean is flying very dangerous missions over Iraq during this war. And he, and he has been my spiritual, with his wife and him, and then my spiritual brother. And he also came and joined me today. Please stand up. Sorry, sorry, and, uh, And of course, I'd like to thank all the, the people of the different parishes, especially St. Anne's. I really grew at St. Anne's Parish. It was a parish that I finished my sabbatical, and after I finished my sabbatical, I said I have nothing to lose. I neither try out all these techniques. If they don't work, that means the sabbatical was worthless. <laughs> and if they work, I am going to put it into action. And I decided to put it into action and I tell you, we, we had one of the most beautiful liturgies in the world. I tell you, I used to cry at the altar when the liturgies used to be sung with such beauty, such dignity, and especially with Brian Paul, who helped out uh, Wally Zula, and uh, Kathy uh, Bailey, all, all these people that were so mu musically you know, inclined to make this, uh, this uh, very beautiful and, 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 and experience at the parish. So to all of you that, all, that were associated with St. Bas, with St. Anne's Parish, and are here today, I have never forgotten you or loved you less. I love you even more, because you made me a better priest. I, want, I think one of the things that I will never forget, you are the only parish where I had a dialogue calmly with you. You were the only parish that were willing to not get threatened by me, and you were willing to question me during my homily, so that you can grow as Christians and become a, a full-grown Christian. And, and also, um, I'm growing in my beauty with St. Basil's Parish. I already, you know, shaken them quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> they have learned now how to hold hands during uh, saying the kiss of peace. They hold hands during our Father. And another big miracle that has happened in St. Basil's Parish we had two communities, we had a Ukrainian community, an English community, and now we have just one community. We have two, one mass that the people love each other unconditionally without saying you're Ukrainian or, or, you're, or you're English. We are Catholics that love unconditionally. So I have to go on my, my, my going on with, to, to, carry, to, to thank Carrie Krynick who played there, you know, it was like a, med, a wedding march for me, you know, and anybody else, and, and with, his, uh, with his friend who played the violin uh, is a William K. And also Veronica and Ilya at Hotel for, for presenting uh, me with, with their bre bre bread and, and uh, butter, bread, not butter, I guess, bread and salt. <laughs> And also for Cynthia and, uh, and Veronica for singing in the beginning of this, uh, this celebration. And also for the, his Metropolitan Grace, Metropolitan Grace, uh, 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 for his, uh, singing the grace. And Deacon Gordon, of course, we for, for presenting the PowerPoint. Uh, you know, Deacon and I have spent many years together. Uh, we, we tease each other. I always pray that hair will grow on his head yet. <laughs> and he keeps telling me yours is go leaving your head, so don't be so proud. You know? And we, we've had a super relationship. He is more than my a brother to me. He is a really a super, super deacon. You know, if, we, if they made more deacons like this, the church would really be blessed. And as Deacon Gordon, thank you for being who you are. And for, I can, the 
light is so bad here, which you can hear. And of course, we have to t thank Brian Paul and Rena uh, Semenko for leading the musical talents and uh, having this joyous uh, music class. And also the Korean uh, dance uh, group, would you believe it? My family, uh, Brenda, who spoke, all her children were part of that group, and she was president of that Trianda group and everything. So that she has many happy memories uh, of, of, of that dancing group. Also, uh, I, oh, please, excuse me. Fa Father uh, Taras Kosh, for those beautiful words. You really turned out to be a really decent priest. <laughs> When he first came out to me to see me to become a priest, I said, don't rush into it. If you go, if you become a celibate priest, you might die from it, I said. Because I knew what he, what, what he liked to see. Uh, Unfortunately, God blessed and blessed and doing a thing. Let me tell you, you could not marry a more beautiful and more giving and loving woman that is makes you. Because every time I see Father Trust and I'm very close, I said, oh, how do you do it working full time as a chaplain? Most people burn out in five years. Okay. And he says, it's my wife. When I come from work, she transmutes everything, all my negativity. And by the time we get home, I feel like a free man. Congratulations, Maria. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Taras, for being my, my uh, also mentor and my beautiful friend that I will never, never, never uh, abandon you also. And finally, who, uh, we, they wrote so many things that you <laughs> <laughs> also for for the for the Joe Bozier gang that's Jerry Antimus from a holy parish for for giving his speech and presentation. Also to Fred Cozina uh, from the mice. You know Fred Cozina is my cousin, and also I have a really and he was the mayor of Bozier. Would you believe that he's, he's not a small peanut? He's a big peanut. <laughs> He is, he, is, he is a really a, a, an amaz amazing person, you know? <laughs> and also Al Kowal and Rose and, uh, and Olenek and, and, and Andy Labai from St. Basil's Parish. And of course, uh, Vic, uh, Rick Veal. Uh, he is another amazing person. Believe it, he, he is Irish and, and he was brought up in the Irish Anglican Church. He has such a deep faith in God that if every Christian had that faith, and he's so Ukrainian, he is so Ukrainian <laughs> that he, dry, he drives me up a wall. <laughs> he is an amazing, amazing soul that I have the deepest respect, and he never misses a meeting. He's at every, at every uh, function of the Knights of Columbus, every function of whatever you need, you could not ask for a more dedicated and loving human being in your life. Congratulations, Mia, you know, for being who you are. And of course, Walter Zulek. Who are going to get Walter Zulek? He has one of the uniquest personality of, of uh, humor. He, has, he is so keen on humor, if you're having a bad day, call Wally Zulek. <laughs> he, he is the one most insightful person. If you want any advice, that is the person you go for advice because he sees things not in, in, in a cloud, but he sees things clearly and rationally and a very, he's an awesome friend to have. I, I could not ask for a more loving and giving friend as Wally Zulek. And all the contribution, if you look, all of Manitoba, every choir that we had here, Wally Zulek had something to do with it. He, he put choirs together and made them work. And I had heard people from the choir said, I will sing for Wally anymore, even in the bush, I will sing for him. <laughs> but he, gets, he is such a great choir director. Congratulations, Wally, and thank you for your friendship. And, and Father Tarasco, who else is here? Wally Zulek. 
Father Isner, who's going to still get to work, he's going to, we're going to work to pray yet. We want to thank Jane McCarville, Daryl Frischu, and Rosalina Katty, and Angela Stoyansky for putting this the beautiful, beautiful banquet together. Let's give her a hand for that the beautiful, beautiful banquet. And for, uh, for, uh, for Rick uh, Mathieu, for his kindness and generosity for making, making the, uh, the room look beautiful. Would you believe this thing was supposed to cost $1,800 and they did it for almost for peanuts. So to give him a beautiful hand for such a beautiful decoration. And I, I think I'm getting loud. Last but least, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming in for this evening. And I want to tell you one thing that, that why I'm so grateful. There is an air of love here. It's a love. I tell you, love is a glue. And wherever there's this glue of love, you make differences. And I'll explain it to you. If everything is energy, and you believe in energy, you can change things just by your energy. Do you realize that, if, that a dog can follow you wherever you go? Why can he follow you? Because he knows your energy. He follows your energy. Can you imagine if you're hateful and you're sitting in a church with hate, someone comes and has to sit in your hate and carry you with him the rest of the day. Imagine you coming to church and sitting on love on the top of the doorknob that you left behind and you left it with love. Wherever you go, you change. And when you change the energy by your presence, you start creating synchronicity. And synchronicity starts bringing in loving people into your life. Loving people together create a vortex. And you create the vortex in the church, and the energy in the church starts changing. When I came to St. Basil's, I always felt they had, we were low in energy. And when they would start something low with a poor song, I said, pick it up, man, let's get it, let, let it get up. Because we create the environment. And what Daryl said, when people leave the church feeling better than when they came, they will come again. But if they come feeling worse than after when they came in, they won't come back. So today, I, to all you priests, I said, make sure you lift the hearts of priests. Make sure they are fit fellow uh, fellow parishioner, make them feel good, make them feel that they have been received a gift from God that is positive, that is uplifting, and that it will change the world around them. And to all of you that have come here today, you have changed my world. What will I do in the future as I retire? I will tell you one thing. I am not really 77. I'm really uh, 27 years old with 50 years of experience. <laughs> last chapter of life. My mother was in a nursing home for six years and I wanted, saw some things that I thought could change. And I, since I've been a priest, I've decided to create a healing center. Imagine when you become old, you don't have to go to a nursing home. You go to a healing center where different alternative methods of healing are available, where people are positive, where we work towards healing. And that is what I am now on the mission of establishing a healing center. And once I think I do that, finish that, then I'll become a spook and watch everything below. So God bless you all, and may he keep, keep you in his loving care. I forgot my family, my family, of my, my brother who has been so supportive, and all my family members, all, all of them. My, my family's been fantastic with me. You know, they, they, they all have their own lifestyles, but they are always there for me whenever I need us. And we are going to have a wedding soon in the family again. And I want to thank my family for being so supportive and so, so loving to me. And, and they are. They, I, whenever I need a holiday, I know I have a place to go. And finally, the sisters. I, you know, they, I, I love nuns. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't want, I, I really tell you why. I was in marriage counseling. I took two years of marriage counseling and I was going to become a marriage counselor. And my mentor said to me, Father, you've got to be married. 
And I said, but for, I said to the counselor, I said, but for, I said to her, I don't want to you know that. I said, the only one I'm making passes at me are ex-nuns. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to be married to an ex-nun. <laughs> so I dropped the program. So, but that's not why I love the sisters. They are really amazing women. If it wasn't, do you know the most educated women in the Catholic Church are the nuns? And when I went to my sabbatical, sisters today all have Ph. degrees and they are women of dignity, character, and, and pure courage. They go to uh, some countries and get, us, get assassinated for their faith. They are really, sisters have a great role to play in our church. They do not have to stay in the sexy, cleaning the sexy, washing the floors and being maids. They are really women that can set, a mission, can set a, a message to the world. We can bring the light of femininity of God into among humanity because God is not male, he is both. God, God is feminine and, and masculine and the women of the church bring that feminine nurturing and loving aspect of Bless your sister, and may you continue to bless you all your life. And finally, I ask all of you to pray. Bless the mother in Medjugorje, bless the mother all over the world that's appearing every day and say, pray, pray, pray. We are in challenging times and, the, and prayer has power. Do not be afraid to pray. Pray all the time. And, you, and who prays, you'll get answers. When you pray, ask and you shall receive. And whatever you ask my name, I shall grant it to you. We become a prayerful people. As we become prayerful people, our young people will return back to church. Our young people will return to catechism because they'll feel the power of prayer and that the Holy Spirit is guiding the church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Slava Jesus, or Slava One thing I'd like to sing some kind of joyful song, Lord. Can you sing us some light, joyful song that we can all sing? Roll, roll your bones. Merrily, 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 life is like a dream. Okay, let's get him sing that, okay? St. Basil's, and Jane McCarville from St. Anne's for all the work they've done. Make sure that both of you can give each one of them a hug. They deserve it. And now, Father Isidore, I want you to say the closing prayer. Announce your ceremony, and brothers and sisters, before we conclude with a prayer, I just want to add a few words of my own experience with Father Walter. Uh, in 1951, I was the one who came into Mandir, Alberta. 1953, along comes a young gentleman, 16 years of age. 
and his name was Walter. We meet him, and of course I was the one, uh, one of the uh, priests and brothers and deacons in those black skirts. <laughs> That was a welcoming ceremony from the Brazilian fathers. <laughs> and of course, after having uh, completed our novitiate and our scholasticate and going to philosophy, uh, there was a sentry to Rome, and father in turn was, went to uh, Ottawa and to Washington, what have you. However, you know, we go back to our roots. Our spirituality commenced in Mandera. We ate the same kapusta, we ate the same trochi, we ate the same uh, baraboni, and all that. And we ended up washing a lot of dishes, didn't we, Walter? <laughs> In any case, you know, we, as a group, we were, we were always a joyous group, and we all always used to sing a lot. Father, you remember them? And I'm going to ask Father Michael Boyacho to come over here. For <laughs> sure. Deacon Victor, finish up. <laughs> Walter, do you remember this song? You, uh, you asked for a song, so, whoa, 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 whoa. we're gonna sing a uh, Ukrainian song. And you, many of you have heard this at St. Basil's Church? And what is old gentleman? This old gentleman who was a young man, and he turned 50. Now he's older. So of course, he's frail, he's weak. And he lies, uh, love a lot of history, so quite. So we're going to sing. Starting by Kokuni, good to Mamma, and Borsh, Dorsh, the city, the Poroji, and Ebola, and Ebola, and And he lit the uh, candela, the incense. 
Boise me, Boise me, smoke galore. But I'm standing by the elder and it's raining and the water's coming down in front of me on the elder. So what do I do? I want to see a few words, so I go by the altar by the Tatra you know? And the water's coming down again in front of me. What am I going to do? The church is leaking. And who should come? Somebody solve the problem. Father Walter's mother comes with an umbrella. Imagine, <laughs> an umbrella. Yes, umbrella. And then, that's how I completed the service. <laughs> that's how I remember Tindo. But another thing happened to me in Tindo, Father Walter knows, I don't know if I should say this. I should. But Christmas Eve, we're happy. Do you have time to listen? <laughs> Christmas Eve, I was told on a sick doll, on a terrible sick doll. We all had Christmas Eve supper, and I'm supposed to go to the Mass to attend them. So, of course, I have to go to attend this. They call and so forth. It was a very troublesome case. I arrived, and normally, as a priest, you go to a different church, you make your own Mass bread, you take your own wine, you take your own water. So, of course, I had my shelf, and I grabbed this bottle of wine, and here I am. Come right on time at midnight for midnight mass. I celebrate mass, and of course, consecrate the bread and the wine. I taste the Holy Communion. It's not wine, it's whiskey. <laughs> but where do I go for midnight for uh, dinner? Mr. Clemson, Mr. and Mrs. Clemson. Of course, the invite me to come over, and John and Patty Pearl, where are you? Oh, yeah, they were there, and your two sisters were there, and one who passed away, and uh, how about the other sister? Yeah, they were there. And of course, Mama is serving us Christmas Eve breakfast and so forth. So here we are, we start to eat, and Mama comes along and says, Mama, she was a sweetheart. Tell you, that's why he's a good priest. <laughs> I, I tell you, I sh oh, so here we are. She says, Father, that Holy Communion was biting my tongue. I can't let your family. I said, You see, Mama, you know what? I think I made a mistake when I said, Bring a bottle of wine, I took a bottle of whiskey with me. I named the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. <laughs> you know, everybody spoke so beautifully about Father, and it's true, that's nice. Beautiful person, warm person, and so forth. So let's leave him in the hands as he prayed to the Blessed Mother. Which is gorgeous, beautiful place in Guatemala and all the places. And, and as you're sitting, Hail Mary, everybody. Hail, Hail Mary. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And as chaplain at the Legion, you know how it is. If I don't say Amen, then they'll chase me out of the Legion. So I have to say Amen. Amen. Father Walter and his whole family that say, Amen. 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 Let's implore the Heavenly Father, the risen Christ, to send us more vocations to the religious life, the priesthood, brotherhood, sisterhood that say, Amen. blessings which you received this afternoon this evening these blessings be with you that you may enjoy good health and happiness and always cherish cherish your pastors wherever they are doesn't matter who they are how old they are or, or, or how young they are remember they represent the Lord Amen, Amen. to see two young priests sitting over here with their feet over. <laughs> I, I'm not thinking from Hollywood. <laughs> but they're 
beggars. Amen. Very, a job very, very well done. Thank you very much, Daryl, for the great job.